I remember browsing through the internet during the mid 2000s, you know when MySpace was like the biggest thing ever, and I remember reading about a Metroid game coming for the Nintendo DS. After over 15 years and several entries into the series, I still always wondered whatever happened to that Metroid game on the DS. I mean sure we did get Metroid Prime Hunters, but that was not the one I read about cause Hunters was already announced and it had gameplay in fact. I remember getting the first model DS that came with the demo of Metroid Prime Hunters called First Hunt. Ever since the last original 2D Metroid that came out in 2002, multiple games have since took over the Metroidvania genre and expanding with games like Bloodstained, Hollow Knight, and Shantae. Suddenly, at Nintendo's E3 presentation in 2021, one of the biggest surprises Nintendo dropped was a Metroid game, but not Metroid Prime 4. Instead, it's a new original 2D Metroid for the first time since Metroid Fusion on the Game Boy Advance. With the help from developer Mercury Steam, who previously worked on Metroid Samus Returns for the Nintendo 3DS, is Metroid Dread worth the near two decade wait, or should the game have just stayed in the drawing board? If you are new to the channel, welcome and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications as we explore the depths that is Metroid Dread. So this game is a direct sequel to Metroid Fusion where the Galactic Federation receives a video showing the X Parasite, which was all supposed to be extinct appearing on the planet ZDR. The Federation sent out research robots called the Emmy to investigate the situation. However, they lose contact of the Emmy, which results in the Federation sending Samus Aran to investigate. Upon arriving to ZDR, Samus encounters a warrior of the Chozo race and battles until she is defeated and stripped of her abilities. To add insult to injury, the Emmy have gone rogue and look to destroy Samus. Now it's up to her to find out what caused the Emmy to turn on her and investigate how the parasites are still alive despite destroying them in Metroid Fusion. The team does a great job with the story with recapping those who haven't played a Metroid game or need a refresher. There are moments in the game that changes the way Metroid is viewed story-wise, and I'd rather not spoil it for you guys. Metroid Dread features the traditional 2D gameplay as previous 2D Metroid entries, such as Fusion and Super Metroid, with notable new tweaks. You get the old traditional items and abilities like the Morph Ball and Speed Booster, as well as new ones, such as the Spider Magnet, where Samus channels her inner Spider-Man by crawling walls and ceilings. The Phantom Cloak, where you hide from the Emmy and pass by security sensors, as well as returning moves like the slide and melee counter from Samus Returns, which can get you out of a tight situation. One of the big enemies in this game is the Emmy, and these bots don't mess around. There are certain areas where they are crawling around, and if they see you, the doors are sealed. If they catch you, you have a slim chance of getting out, otherwise, you're dead. You may think that these bots can't be killed, but there is a way. Each of these rooms, Samus obtains the Omega Cannon that is used to destroy them, but you have to make sure you have plenty of space to take them out. The Emmy add more of a survival element to this game that reminds me of Resident Evil 2 when avoiding Mr. X, and as you progress more into the game, the Emmy have some tricks up on their sleeves, and it's best to use what you have to survive them, otherwise, it's gonna be a long night for you. This new entry also keeps all of the Metroid goodness you come to expect. This planet is pretty huge, with lots of passages and secrets that will make you think twice about moving forward. With a planet this huge, you will most likely do some backtracking at least half of the game. Luckily there are teleporters that will take you to other sections of the planet. The game runs really good at 1080p 60fps in dock mode, while running at 60fps 720p in handheld mode. The visuals look great in this game, that each section has its own theme and vibes from the backgrounds and depth, and it doesn't feel like the same room over and over again. From the molten lava to seeing rock and structure crumble, each of these stages look really good and takes advantage of the Switch's hardware. The game's soundtrack is top notch, from hearing remixes of songs from Super Metroid to hearing new tracks that could help set the mood. Like for example, the music when entering an Emmy room can put you on the edge of your seat. Some of the tracks fit in some of the rooms to the point I think some would have made great tracks for other Nintendo games like a Mario or a Zelda. Of course, it isn't a Metroid game without some boss battles, and these bosses definitely deliver. Some of them can be as simple as keep shooting until they're dead, while others some strategy may be needed, and there is no shame in dying a couple of times to understand how to defeat these bosses. In terms of issues, there are a couple of issues I have with Metroid Dread. For starters, the difficulty. Traditionally, Metroid games are challenging, but this was a tough one to get through sometimes, especially when it comes to figuring out where to go next, which can be a turnoff for some casual fans. Personally, I would have liked to have custom button mapping, especially with all these new abilities. Sometimes I would get confused between shooting missiles and the grapple beam. Also, during the boss battles, there are occasional moments where you have to be quick to defeat them, and sometimes these quick time events can come at the most inconvenient times, as sometimes it's hard to tell if it's a cutscene or still part of the battle. 
So one of the main issues many gamers were concerned with leading up to its release was if Metroid Dread was worth the $60 price tag. I can understand where people are asking this, as this is a 2D game and the file size is pretty small, especially from a AAA title from Nintendo. Personally, this game should not have been $60. The last few 2D Metroids that were released were between the $30 to $40 US dollar range, and I feel Dread should have been at that price, or at least like $50. Other than that, Metroid Dread is a blast and an excellent entry into the 30-year franchise. With the vast arsenal of weapons, excellent graphics, and a story that could grab anyone's attention, whether it's their first rodeo with Metroid or a returning veteran. In the last few years, there have been other games that look to take over the top of the Metroidvania genre, and it seemed that Nintendo and Mercury Steam had a lot of pressure to deliver with this game, especially for its long development. I'm happy to say that the Queen is back, and it's on top of the Metroidvania mountain once again. With that in mind, Metroid Dread for the Nintendo Switch gets a 9 out of 10. Thank you all for watching this review. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more reviews. Also check out my other videos and reviews as well. Once again, thank you for watching and take care. Peace.